And on top of that, how silly would it be that you're paying nine thousand a year oh, yeah. <laughs> um, with just tuition fee, and you're you're literally not working uh, mm. to get the best out of it. You're not working to to learn from those people that are willing to teach you. That's not really the best utilization of the money. It's not it's mm. not money well spent, in my opinion. And I don't think yeah. a lot of people would disagree. Hello, 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 hello again, viewers. You are welcome to my channel where we learn from one another. Um, thank you very much for always coming here to like, to share, to subscribe, to support the channel in various ways. I really appreciate you. And um, today we have a wonderful guest. Um, he's um, When you start to hear him, you will know what I mean by a wonderful guest. And he is someone who has worked very hard for his grades. He has just finished university. He's a software engineer and he finished with a first class. So you want to meet this, this excellent student, I will say, <laughs> who is now doing wonders, who's going to tell us about how to become an A-star student. So the topic for today is how to become an A-star student. I'll invite on the screen Ridwan Ishola. He is um, here to talk to us about this. So young ones, listen. And if there are, is there's anyone you think needs to listen to this, call them in, share the video, like, and subscribe. I call on Ridwan. You are welcome. Hello, welcome. Thank you for your time. Hello, Auntie. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, yeah, it was, definitely, it was kind to say the least, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So could you please introduce yourself and tell us about your educational journey so far? Yeah, just to add a bit more about what Auntie said. Uh, my name is obviously Ridon, as mentioned. Um, I just finished graduating uh, from Queen Mary in London, um, and I'm now working as a software engineer. Uh, my journey is a little bit like, it's not exactly straight, uh, because obviously I didn't just wake up one day um, and decided to end up where, I, where I'm at now, but it's literally when God leads away, like it, the, literally you don't need to w worry about anything else because um, literally I'll take you through my secondary school from secondary school up till now. So <laughs> throughout school, I've never been like too sure what I wanted to be. Um, at first I wanted to be a pilot, but then I started getting too scared of planes. So I was like, yep, yeah, I can't be a pilot when I'm scared of planes. Um, and then obviously decided to um, be work in finance, uh, decided to want to work in IT. Um, but then obviously people in my school, my teachers, they told me that like um, people don't really, every, people don't really need that skill anymore because everyone knows how to use a computer, but they don't know that using a computer is not just what IT entails. There's more to it than just that. Uh, so obviously my mind switched back then. So I decided I wanted to work in finance, but then when I finished my A-levels with like all the subjects, deciding to go to university to stop it, uh, to st uh, study finance, one or two things happened where I had to like get, go back and like sort of like re-decide. I had more time to basically decide what I wanted to do with myself because obviously at that age, it's far too young to decide what you wanted to do for like 20, 30 years. Um, so you know, now I look at it as a blessing, but at the time it was like such a big shock that, you know, I literally have all the grades and like I now all of a sudden I can't go to university. But regardless, um, I saw it as like a free time and I decided to do something that I've never learned before. So then I enrolled at my local college and started do, doing software engineering and I fell in love with it. And I was 100% sure that that was what I wanted to do. And obviously free university, you learn more about the field, you become more knowledgeable. Uh, so knowledgeable, in fact, that you end up being a software engineer as I am now. So yeah, that's a brief introduction about myself. Wow, that's wonderful. So you've been through quite a journey yourself. Yeah. You started off with something and then you went off on a tangent. <laughs> yeah, to, exactly. To, to a complete else. opposite, yeah. And, you know, I remember those times then when, um, you know, you, you, your, your aim was to do going to the computer, the IT field. But then we had teachers who were telling you contrary. Yeah, and, um, exactly. Yeah, so I believe it all worked together for good, even though they gave wrong counselling yeah. <laughs> at that time. Now you, time, yeah. I'm glad. God rid I made a way. Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, right. Thank you very much. Now, what does it mean to be an A star student? What does that actually mean? Yeah, <clears throat> I had a little bit of a uh, difficulty uh, coming up with this because A star student, even though sometimes you're not getting the grades, but one of it is to do with hard work. But then, obviously, let's focus on the grade now. 
Um, I would say an A-star student is where your dedication is reflected in your academic results. So that's why I started off that sometimes it's not to do with the grades, but in this sense it is. Um, and to go delve into that a little bit more, like a little bit more, um, like with anything, right, you need lots of practice. So for example, the strongest, strongest man in the world spends a lot of time in the gym, um, like to practice, to being like the best person. Like when you look at professional athletes as well, the best ones are usually the ones that have practiced the most. Mm. So an A-star student is usually one where sort of their hard work and dedication and all this practice that they've put in is reflected in their grade. That's why you're seeing their grades as, as high as they are. It's not because, oh, they woke up one morning and just like woke up and did exams and like just passed it easily. Some people are like that annoyingly, but the, for the most of us, the normal ones, we do have to work hard and dedicate ourselves to like a trade before we can obviously call ourselves the A-star student that we hopefully will become. Wow, wow. Well, I like that sense, uh, that statement where you said, um, where your dedication reflects in your results. Wow. Yeah. But are there, in your experience being at uni and, and uh, being a recent graduate, are there people who actually work very little and still get the results? Well, it's, it depends what you call a good result because there are some people that just passing is good enough for them. Uh, there are some people that obviously you need to, they want to get a first. So it depends. But obviously with us, we want to get the best, right? So getting a first, you do need to put your graft in. You do need to dedicate yourself uh, in, mm. your, in, your, in your field, in your studies. And you do need to fall in love with it as well. Um, I wouldn't say that it's easy to, as this is not GCSEs now. You would not just get by just coasting. Obviously you, to get the top grades, you need to work hard. But you can pass. I'm not trying to give like the wrong uh, sort of advice out. You can yeah. pass. You, you won't get the best grades, but you mm. can pass. You can get the bare minimum by not dedicating yourself. But then that yeah. would be a waste of time, wouldn't it? Because what's the point of spending all that money and all that time? Three years is not a joke. Um, not trying to be the best, not trying to get the best grade that you can, right? Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. So you say you can get the bare minimum if that is what you really want to settle for. But yeah. if you want to you know whatever is worth doing at all is what doing well thank you um yeah. that takes me to my next question which is why should any student aim at excellence? excellence is it really important from your experience it is very important and i think it should everyone should make it a goal in whatever they do to aim for excellence not just in education but for now since we're talking about education um it's very very important for you to aim for excellence and i'll give you a few reasons why so in education it's one of the rare uh, instances in life where you actually get taught for free, especially in the UK. But let's take away the money now. You're getting taught by someone that knows a lot more than you. Very rare that you're going to come across that in life because for the rest of your life, life itself will teach you that like, you're literally left on your own to learn. Um, but then in the UK, we're even having the added advantage that it's paid for us. Imagine that. That's literally like a whole someone giving you a service. They're providing you a service to teach you, to make you a better person. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it all for free, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so why not just make the best out of that? There are people out there trying to get the same opportunities that you're uh, having for free. Um, and also, when you get older, you're going to be having to pay for like certain things. So after a certain age, these things that you're getting for free, you're, you're going to be having to work for it. You're going to have to be paying for it. So mm. it's very, very important that you aim for the best, you aim for excellence when you're actually given it, like the service has been provided for you, because then that's obviously a wiser decision because you're using the time a lot better. You're using the resources a lot better. And obviously like the grades or the outcome of it obviously speak for itself when you actually aim for excellence because you're getting the best um, sort of grades uh, after that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Though you, you mentioned um, learning for free. Uh, I'm not sure about that because you yes, pay. Yes. At university, obviously, <laughs> you need to pay. You need to pay for it. Okay. Yes. But the main point here is that striving for excellence is very, very important because it's the best way to use, utilize your time and whatever resources. And on top of that, how silly would it be that you're paying nine thousand a year oh, yeah. <laughs> um with just tuition fee and you're you're literally not working uh mm. to get the best out of it you're not working to to learn from those people that are willing to teach you you're not willing yeah. to sort of like involve yourself or uh, involve yourself with like the subjects that's not really the best utilization of the money it's not it's mm. not money well spent in my opinion and i don't think yeah. a lot of people would disagree 
yeah sure sure thank you yeah um and um so what what are what do you think in your opinion are the tips you will give to students to become the best version of themselves academically if they're not if they are ones that don't want to settle for less they they want to aim high they want to get to you know get their goals they want to get their grades they want to get the best of jobs and so what what advice will you give or what tips will you give to them to become the best version of themselves academically yes this is a very good question and uh, feel free to add more in the comments as well but one of the first ones that came to mind was asking questions um this is like not actually that hard in practice but in your head you make it bigger than it is because you get shy that oh this person's going to think i'm not smart or they're going to judge but asking questions is the best way to become the best version of yourself because sometimes there are people that are already there and they would literally imagine find trying to find a way and someone already knows the way and actually has access to a shortcut that's literally what it is like asking mm-hmm. questions so instead of having to go through like the process of um suffering of not knowing you ask someone that already knows like your teacher and they obviously lead you through the like through the right way. And the mm-hmm. second one is um, learning from others. So not only can you learn from your teacher, you can also learn from your friends. Um, in your friendship group, there's always two or three people, at least one person that knows a lot more than you do. Those people, absolute gems, learn from them um, as much as you can. And that sort of links a little bit into the next one, which is don't be disheartened when you don't succeed. It's very, very easy to become disheartened when your friends are getting better grades than you or you're putting in a lot of work and you're not getting the grades that you think you deserve. Mm -hmm. And that could actually lead you to give up and like give up the hard work or you won't enjoy the fruits if you give up at that point. At that point, So do not be disheartened at all. And that's the next point. And the next one is uh, practicing. So as I mentioned earlier, most people that are the best in what they do, they practice, they spend hours and hours practicing. And there's a golden rule of the 10,000 point, 10,000 hours point where you become an expert at what you do. But I'm not sure how true that is, but it's just like a general rule of thumb that people believe. Um, Practice, practice, practice is important at being good at anything. And lastly, um, this is a very key one because it's very hard to practice something or spend all this time on if you don't treat it as your passion so the next thing is to treat this as you should fall in love with it basically you should see you should see a good reason why getting a good grade is worth it because if you don't then you you won't you're going to find it harder to spend all that time and you won't be motivated to do it so treat this as your passion Mm, true true treat it as a passion thank you Yes. yes, a lot to talk about, I'm sure. So, yeah. viewers, you're listening. What are your tips? Maybe you've gone through, you know, um, being an undergraduate and you're now a graduate yourself, and you've got tips as well that you want to add to it. Please feel free to add in the comments down below, uh, share the video, like, and subscribe. So, we would like to hear from you. Thank you very much, Ridon, for um, giving us those tips. I'm sure there's so many more. And people are going to be writing in the comments. And if you've got any questions for Rido and you're struggling with a particular question, you're thinking, um, yeah, I tried this. I tried the questions, but then um, I got bullied um, or I got what, you know, you, you might have a bad experience with asking questions. Or maybe you don't even know how to ask questions. You can ask. In yeah, start by asking, <laughs> asking the question of how to ask questions. In the <laughs> yeah, so and um, Rita will be ready to answer you. What are the difficulties or obstacles to performing excellently? Yeah, that's another key question, and I think a lot of people would agree that the first point I'm about to mention is probably one that a lot of people they probably suffer from at some point, and that point is procrastination. So it's very, very like it's painful when you look back that like the amount of progress that you'd have made when in your mind you haven't just pushed off that work or that assignment to, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week or I'll do it next month or I'll do it when I come back from eating or I'll do it when I wake up. Um, Procrastination is the biggest killer of time. That's like one of the key sayings. So procrastination, you need to overcome it if you want to make sure that if you want to try and get the best out of yourself as you can. And then this actually links into the next one, which is time. So obviously procrastination kills the time that you have to actually spend time doing the right things. And it links into the earlier things that I said about practice. So when you don't leave enough time, 
you don't have enough time to practice. And obviously with anything, if you want to be good, you need to spend good a good amount of time on it. So when you don't, you won't get the results. And lastly, um, with practicing, what practicing actually does for you is that it helps you feel more confident in like an exam or whatever you're about to do. And it, it stops the next thing that I'm about to mention, which is stress. Stress doesn't help you. Stress is like one of the biggest killers of performance. So when you're stressed at something or stressed about something you're about to do, it's not going to help you. You're only going to perform worse. Mm -hmm. So that's probably maybe from not practicing enough. So this is very, very, this is like the reason why it's very, very important to practice, 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 because it, it stops stress. And mm -hmm. um, obviously it's a better way to manage your time. And it shows that you're not procrastinating, right? Mm -hmm yeah yeah good thank you very much i was yeah thank you you know you've 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 hit the nail on the head there with um, all that you said thank you very much and i'm sure there are viewers listening and thinking oh yeah actually maybe this is why i get stressed i don't practice enough or i don't give enough time for this and all that thank you very much yeah so what advice do you have for people who say oh um this person's method doesn't work for me because i'm an, a night owl another one says oh i'm an early bird um what would you what's your opinion about that yeah my opinion is absolutely find what works for you um there are some people that truly they only work the best at night times and there are oh. some people that as soon as they wake up their brain's firing up and they're ready to work oh. find what works for you but i'll give you one advice though if you are a night owl don't try and study on your bed do not uh make sure you're like in an environment where your learning is going to be encouraged. So maybe in a library, I'm, I'm not, maybe on your, you live on campus, for example, and your library is not too far away or try and do it somewhere else that your bed isn't because although you're a night owl, your bed's also calling you at night. So yeah, it's just <laughs> something to be careful about. Mm, I remember anytime we call you, where are you? Like, I'm in the library, always in the library, <laughs> sleeping in the library. I'm sure. <laughs> what was I think? Do they allow you to eat in the library? <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was nice speaking to you. It was nice having this chat with you. And I'm sure this video is going to be useful to as many that are uh, have been thinking, oh, how do I excel in this? And there's so many videos to come about A-levels, about um, gap year, about so many other other things that people are asking questions about so thank you very much for this time you've spent with us and i know you need to rush back to do some other things thank you thanks for having me thank you thank you very much so there you go viewers you've heard it all and i'm sure you've got questions you've got comments please write them down below and let us um share from your own experience or from your own tips thank you very much for listening and we'll see you another time Bye bye